Whitcalls are removing Peterson's book from the shelves. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life is being removed from shelves from Whitcalls in New Zealand following the attack. Now, I, I wanted to read through this article because I'm a fan of Peterson's. I've read his book. I've listened to a lot of his lectures. I've even gone to see his presentation, his lecture here in Brisbane. And there weren't any protesters, actually. I was a bit disappointed. So let's have a read through this article. A Jordan Peterson book is no longer for sale in With Coles, New Zealand, following the Christchurch terror attack. The controversial Canadian professor visited Aotearoa in February, weeks before a gunman killed 50 people and injured dozens more at two mosques in Christchurch. Although Peterson's book promotes self-help rather than violence or racism, that's that's good that's that they're actually bringing that to, into this article. I'm happy they've done that. He was photographed in New Zealand embracing a fan wearing a t-shirt embezzled, you know, sorry, emblazoned with the words, I'm a proud Islamophobe, along with a list of various inflammatory accusations about Muslims. Okay, so he got a photo taken with this guy during the event. Now, I actually got to meet and shake uh, Jordan Peterson's hand when I was here in Brisbane. He's just, you know, boom, operating. You think he'd notice that? And the problem is, people are just, uh, they're framing it. They're seeing that, oh, he's with him, so he must agree with everything this guy has on his shirt. That's naive, people. It's naive. It, this doesn't work. Oh. Whitcalls doesn't specify the exact reason why dumping Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, an antidote to chaos, but the Islamophobe t-shirt photo could be a part of the disturbing material referred to in replies to consumer inquiries. Unfortunately, 12 Rules for Life is currently unavailable, which is a decision that Whitcalls has made in light of some extremely disturbing material being circulated prior, during, and after the Christchurch attacks, Whitcalls said in an email. As a business which takes our responsibility to our communities very seriously, we believe it would be wrong to support the author at this time. Okay? That's just... Oh... Apologies that we're not able to sell it to you, but we appreciate your understanding. So, if this is what they're... I, mean, I can't imagine what else they're using, but if this is what they are concerned about, that he happened to get a photo next to someone, so you've got to vet all the people that come to get a photo with you, that even come to your events, that's not how life works, guys. That, that's a, You want everyone to be in constant virtue signal mode? Whitcalls have been approached for further comment. ACT party leader David Seymour told News Hub he isn't impressed. Neither am I. You don't fight neo-Nazism by suppressing reading and books. Anyone who knows any history knows that that's the opposite of how you fight these kinds of ideas, said Seymour. Yeah, no, it's, it's actually the policy of the authoritarians to suppress access to these things. A self-help book is an incredibly strange thing to suppress. I think Whitcalls have made the wrong decision, but I respect they're a private company, it's their right. Searches for 12 Rules for Life and Jordan Peterson both currently return no results on Whitcall's New Zealand website. When News Hub phoned Whitcall's shops to ask if they had hard copies of the book in stock, we were told it's unavailable. 12 Rules for Life, an antidote to chaos, does not contain the word Islam and only contains the word Muslim once, but not in a negative context. Meanwhile, other titles about Islam are still available, including Islam Unmasked, by Henry Malone, which claims to expose the lies behind Islamic doctrines and the futility of Islamic practices. Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf is also available for, for purchase. So they've managed to, to link it to these other, or just contrast, because, you know, Peterson's obviously worse than Hitler. Worse than Hitler, according to this. So let's, let's have a look at the 12 Rules for Life. Let's look at it here. Now, I've got, this is from a poster I bought and photographed, so there's a little bit of blue in there, but for what we're looking at, it's okay. Uh, so, rule number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back, okay? Uh, uh, there we go, yep, stretching. Rule number two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. Okay, nothing, nothing too controversial so far. Three, make friends with people who want the best for you. Yep. 
What's what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? <laughs> Four. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not someone else, not who someone else is today. Guys, let me know in the comments. Are any of these things jumping out at you? Why should it not be available? Five. Do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. As a parent of four, I completely <laughs> appreciate that rule. That's good. Six. Set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. Now, this is a lesson that a lot of social justice activists need to be aware of. A lot of people need to be aware of, frankly. Set your house in order or set your house in perfect order, not even not just order, perfect order before you criticize the world. Rule seven, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. You know, you can, he obviously pulls these apart in the books, gives examples, and it's quite good. But, you know, it, it's a, it, this all started from, I think, a, a post on an online forum. Eight, tell the truth, or at least don't lie. Well, We've learned recently about how people in the media are lying and they're not telling the truth. Maybe that's something that everyone needs to work out, work on. Rule nine, assume the person you're listening to might know something you don't. Okay, this is a good rule. This is a rule I've been trying to adopt just with regards to comments and, and things from people everywhere. Particularly if you put your stuff out on YouTube, you get a lot of comments. A lot of people are attacking you. So I don't, I try not to instantly attack back. I try and pull apart or ask for evidence. And you find often people don't have that. They'll just attack you personally. 10. Be precise in your speech. Now, this is an interesting one, particularly for our good friend Koshi. When people are saying, I think there's one gentleman who made left comments on my uh, one of my videos about how, but Koshi meant to say this, or he obviously meant to say that. So this person was adding words in his memory. He was adding words to what Koshi was saying to justify what he was saying, to kind of just pull apart my argument, which which you can't really do. We need to be precise in our speech. And this is something I try and make an effort to. And, you know... Part of YouTube is practicing that, to be honest. So, yeah, that's a good one. 11. Don't bother children when they are skateboarding. That's good. And that, that ties in also to the whole idea of, uh, I think, rough play as well and allowing children to explore their environment. And you're seeing more and more it's not happening with, uh, with kids these days. And rule 12, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. And I like the fact that they've got a picture of a dog there. So yeah, I'm a dog person. So, these 12 rules. This bookstore saw fit to remove this book and, pardon me, deny access to this for New Zealanders. What do you guys think? Do you think this is fair? Let me know. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about these rules? Now, that's not the only Jordan Peterson bit of news that's happening at the moment. If you're following him, you've seen he will ask for a visiting fellowship at the Faculty of Divinity in Cambridge. And this is you know, their tweet that they put out recently. Jordan Peterson Peterson requested oh yeah, Jordan Peterson requested a visiting fellowship at the Faculty of Divinity, and an initial offer has been rescinded after a further review. Wow. I thought when I first read this, I thought after a further interview, I thought they'd actually spoken to him. But no, no, it doesn't look like they have doesn't look like they have and I wanted to read out his response so I'm not going to go through all of Peterson's response I'll link to that on his blog and you can go through that there's just a few bits I want to highlight for everyone's uh, consideration because this is Cambridge University this is a world-class university so here we go in, in the fall I'm planning to produce a series of lectures on the Exodus stories I presume they will have equal drawing power and he's referring to how many views he's received for his previous work, which is just insane. If, if he compares the, the, his reach online using YouTube to a you know, university lecture, it's just phenomenal. And that, that's why we're in a different world at the moment. Uh, Avi Yemeni has called out a comedian who is falsely editing or editing his responses to make him look bad uh, by just recording the entire interview. We're in, I, I, I say today we're in the long form age where people watch long form content online not little snippets anymore 
I thought that I could extend my knowledge of the relevant stories by spending time in Cambridge, and that doing so would be useful for me, for the faculty members who might be interested in speaking with me, and to the students. I also regarded it as a privilege and an opportunity. I believed, and still believe, that collaborating with the Faculty of Divinity on such a project would constitute an opportunity of clear mutual benefit. Finally, I thought that making myself more knowledgeable about relevant biblical matters by working with the experts there would be of substantive benefit to the public audience who would eventually receive the resultant lectures. And that's a very good point. How many of you have, let me know in the comments, how many of you have listened to a Jordan Peterson lecture? Put your hand up or, or let me know. How many of you have listened to or read any work from the Divinity fac Faculty of Cambridge? I need a cricket sound effect, but I, I don't have one. Now the Divinity School has decided that signaling their solidarity with the diversity inclusive equity mob trumps the opportunities, or so I presume, because they pay, posted this publicly on Twitter. You see, I don't yet know because, and this is particularly appalling, I was not formally notified of this decision by any representative of the Divinity School. So he wasn't formally notified. He didn't receive a letter. They put it on Twitter before they informed him. What is happening to the world? What is going on? I have heard about the rescinding offer, rescinded offer through the grapevine via a colleague and friend and gathered what I could about the reasons from social media and press coverage, assuming that CUSU has at least something to do with it. Wow. I would also like to point out something else. As I, as I already noted, the Divinity faculty tweeted their decision to rescind consciously making this a public issue. This is inexcusable in my estimation, given one, that they did not equally publicize the initial agreement invitation, which has to be considered an event of equal import, and two, that they implied that I came cap in hand to the school for the fellowship. This is precisely the kind of half-truth particularly characterized by those who deeply practice to deceive. As the fellowship offer was a consequence of mutual discussion between those who invited me to Cambridge in July and my subsequent formal request, and not something that I dreamed up on my own. It's not going to make any difference to my future in some sense. I have more opportunities at the moment that I keep track of, let alone, let's say, capitalize on. It's a complex and surreal, it's a really fortunate position to occupy, and I'm not going to take it for granted. But it happens to be true. In the fall, therefore, I'll proceed, uh, produce the lectures I plan to produce on Exodus, regardless of whether they occur in the UK or in Canada or elsewhere. And they will attract whatever audience remains interested. But I think that it is deeply unfortunate that the authorities at the Divinity School of Cambridge have decided that kowtowing to an ill-informed, ignorant, and ideologically adult mob, Trump, participating in an extensive online experiment in mass Christian and psychological education. Given the continued decline of church attendance, the rise in atheistic or agnostic sentiment, the increasing irrelevance of theological education, and the collapse in interest in such matters among young people, wiser and more profound decisions might have been made. You see, it matters whether people around the world understand these ancient stories. It deeply matters. We are becoming unmoored because we no longer share the structure of these stories under grid. This is psychologically disabilizing. It's producing a pathological and desperate nihilism that is increasingly common and at the same time a pronounced proclivity for the ideologically certainty that mimics but cannot replace true religious belief. Both consequences are bound to be, as the evidence certainly indicates, divisive and truly dangerous. I think the Faculty of Divinity made a serious error of judgment in rescinding their offer to me, and I'm speaking about those unnamed persons who made that specific decision. I think they handled publicizing the rescindment in a manner that could hardly have been more narcissistic, self-congratulatory, and devious. I believe the parties in question don't give a damn about the perilous decline of Christianity, and I presume in any case that they regard that faith in their propaganda adult stalls as the ultimate manifestation of the oppressive Western patriarchy, despite their hypothetical allegiance to their own discipline. I think that it is no bloody wonder that the faith is declining, and with it the values of the West, as it fragments. 
with cowards, montebanks of the sort who manifest themselves today at the helm. I wish them the continued decline in, re re in relevance over the next few decades that they deeply and profoundly and diligently work towards and deserve. P.S. I also find it interesting and deeply revealing that I know the names of the people who invited me, both informally and informally, but the names of the people who have disinvited me remain shrouded in exactly the kind of secrecy that might be expected from hidden, conspiratorial, authoritarian, and cowardly bureaucrats. How many were there? No one knows. By what process did they come to the decision? Since there were obviously people who wanted to meet me there, no one knows. On what grounds was the decision made? That has not been revealed. What role was played by pressure from, for example, the CUSU? That's apparently no one's business. It is on such grounds that tyranny does not so much grow as positively thrive. PPS. Here's something from Vice Chancellor Professor Stephen Toop of the University of Cambridge that's worth considering. In the current context, the described openness is apparently part of the university's declared strategic initi initiative regarding what else? Equality and diversity. Diversity. He added the board. One very specific aspect of openness is being inclusive and open to diversity in all its forms. Diversity of interests, beliefs, of gender, religion, sexual identity, ethnicity, of physical ability. Well, there you go, everyone. I'll link to the full blog post if you want to read all of it. I think it's, you know, they're pulling his books from New Zealand. <laughs> he's getting rescinded offers from Cambridge, but he's more popular than ever. He's doing really well. His book is fantastic. And hey, if you haven't got it, I'll link to my Amazon uh, support or referral link, and you can help support the channel. Thank you for people that are actually you know buying things through Amazon. It's it's really helping me out. You know, little bits add up, guys. It all adds up. So thank you all very much for joining me for this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ding the bell to see my daily updates, and I will see you all again tomorrow. Bye for now.